So in the last video, we determined what are the properties of a binomial experiment and the definitions that are involved with that. So now we want to practice that definition and determining whether experiments are binomial in the next example. So it says determine which of the following probability experiments qualify as a binomial experiment. For those that are binomial experiments, identify N, P, S, F, and X. If it does not, explain why not. Okay, so a student takes a multiple choice test that has 20 questions. Each question has five choices, only one of which is correct. The student guesses randomly at each answer. So if we think of the properties that make something binomial, and let me pull them up on the exam notes packet just for ease of finding them. There they are. So we need to have a fixed number of trials. The trials need to be independent. There need to be two possible outcomes, but only two. And the probability of success has to be the same consistently through every trial. All right, so if we look at this experiment, we do in fact have a fixed number of trials. So the fixed number of trials would be equal to n, which is equal to 20, because the student is randomly guessing on 20 questions. So there's our n right there. Then let's figure out whether or not those are independent. Well, since the student is guessing randomly at multiple choice questions, we're assuming they're not even trying to determine from one question to the next whether there's a string of logic. So that random guessing, in fact, does make it so that it is independent. So that's great. So we have independent, we have a fixed number of trials, then we need to figure out the probability of success, or excuse me, we have to figure out what success is, define it. So success is equal to, so in a question like this, it doesn't really state it, but it's kind of obvious, it would be that um, for any one question that the student guesses correctly. So student guesses question correctly. Then failure, which would be equal to F, by the way. So we're, we're figuring out S and F right here. So S is what success is. And success and failure are not numbers. They're actually going to be defined. So you're going to define them with words. So this would be the student guesses the question, or guesses incorrectly. How about that? So that's what S is, and that's what F is. X is always the number of successes. So in our case, it would be the number of questions guessed correctly. So you don't want to just say the number of successes, although that's true. You want to put it in the context of the problem that you're working on. And the context we're working on would have it be the number of questions guessed correctly. So that's N, S, F, X. All right, so we have our success and failure, we have our independence, we have our fixed number of trials. The only other thing we need is to know that the probability of success, P, which is the probability of success, is consistent. Well, sure, it's consistent. It's consistently one out of five. See, the 20 questions is how many of the trials we're doing. So we're doing 20 trials, that's where 20 comes from right here. But What's the probability of success on any one of those trials? Well, that would be one-fifth. Sorry, pressing the wrong button. Right, one-fifth because each question has five choices, only one of which is correct. That's where we're getting the one-fifth from. Right? So that other language determines what the probability of success is. And this is consistent for each question, right, for each trial. Each trial, each question, has five options, only one of which is correct. So the probability of success is consistent for every single trial. So this is binomial. So this is binomial experiment. And we've just proven it. Right? So we have a consistent probability of success. The trials are independent. There are two possible outcomes. And there's a fixed number of trials. All right, what about letter B? We have a loaded die that tosses fives 80% of the time. We toss the die and record the number of rolls it takes to obtain a three. Ah, that's a problem right there. Record the number of rolls it takes to obtain a three. That's a little bit worrisome. 
because we don't have a fixed number. So you could pick this die up and take three times to get a three, or you could pick the die up and take ten times to get a three. So you keep rolling until you obtain a three. That is not binomial. Not even a little bit. All right, next, the Agency for Healthcare Research Quality reported that 53% of people who had coronary bypass surgery in 2008 were over the age of 65. 15 random coronary bypass patients are sampled, and the number who are over 65 is recorded. All right, well, let's run through the list. Fixed number of trials. Um, seems like there is right here with the number 15. There's our fixed number of trials then trials are independent. Well, sure, because if they're randomly selected, then the person that's over 65 doesn't have any bearing on the age of the next person over 65. As long as these people are not related, there should be no problem with independence. Um, the third thing is two outcomes, success and failure. And that's where the number who are over 65 is recorded. That's your success right there. It's being given to you in the problem. And then failure, obviously, is not over 65. And then the other thing is that the probability of success is consistent, but it is. It's 53% for the population, right? So if it's 53% for the population, then it's likely going to be for your particular problem. So let's see. We've got 15 here for our trials. Then success if you look in the problem, this one's actually given. It's being over, a patient is over 65, right here. Because it says the number who are over 65 is recorded. What they're telling you is what X is right there. Uh, let me put it in red here. So X is the number of patients over, over 65. So they're sort of telling you S and X because, of course, X is the number that are successful. So they're giving you that. So then the patient that is not over 65, which is probably 64 and under, right? Because one imagines what the second they turn 65, they put, put into this over 65 bracket, i.e. patient is 64 or un, and under. And the probability of success is 0.53. Right, because it's 0.53 for the population at large, therefore it is for this group, right? the population being all coronary bypass patients in 2008. And that's consistent for every patient, right? not question, but patient. And the patients are our trials. So there are 15 patients. And actually, I guess that I could put that up here. For this one, it was questions. So the trials are questions, and this one, the trials are patients. So we have all four categories satisfied. This is a binomial experiment. We've defined N, S, F, X, and P. P being the probability of success. That should be a lowercase p right there. Lowercase p stands for the probability of success. All right, next one. A jar contains five red marbles, nine blue marbles, and six green marbles. You randomly select three red marbles from the jar without replacement. Uh-oh, that's a concern. Because if you're going to do this without replacement, then you're losing, sorry, then you're losing something. You're losing independence. And then you're also losing your probability of success. It's not going to consistently be the same from trial to trial. So this is not binomial. And that's what I wrote up. So the outcomes are not independent because the marbles are sampled without replacement. And that breaks rule number two, the whole independence thing. And keep in mind, it also breaks rule number four because the probability of success, which is lowercase p, keeps changing. So when you're doing without replacement, or when you're sampling without replacement, you actually break two rules at the same time. But just a little note to keep in mind for future. Um, in general, experiments done without replacement are not binomial. But, and there's a big but on that, um, if we took three marbles out of a 10,000 at a factory, right? If you're, you're just rolling through the marble factory and you just take a few, put them in your pocket. It's not technically independent, right? Because of these rules, because, you know, you're changing what's left in the mar factory and such. But it's actually really close to it because the amount you're taking, which is three, is so small in comparison to the 100,000, sorry, I said 10,000 earlier, 100,000 in the factory. 
that's very different from this jar, which only has 20 marbles in it, right? Taking three marbles out of a, out of a jar of 20, that's significant, right? You'll notice that difference. But sneaking three marbles out of a factory, hmm, technically it's not independent, but it's close enough that we're going to kind of fake our way through it in chapters 9 and 10, and 8, as a matter of fact, so 8 through 10. So this is going to come back to haunt you a little bit later on. So just make a note of it now.